Panos as well. And um, yeah, welcome everyone. So excited. Great to be here today with all of you. I hope you're having as beautiful day as I am. We are live right now on Entra, the number one fastest growing Web3 professional network and the new way to work here on Entra. We combine social like LinkedIn, marketplace like Upwork and communication like Slack. Our goal is to enable anyone from around the world to easily connect and work with people and the resources they need to help them succeed. My name is Miriam Dorset. I'm the founder of Hebor. We build brands and products for artists and community organizations. And today I have the true pleasure of chatting with Nana Merriweather, the founder of Navina, a wellness company focused on alcohol alternatives. Yay. Hi. <laughs> Nana, thank you for joining me. I have so many questions for you. Um, how much time do you have for us today? Maybe about 40 minutes. That's perfect. And I apologize. I didn't get a chance to send you the questions I wanted to ask you in advance. That's okay. It's okay. juicier this way. It's juicier. And I felt like, well, she's like former Miss USA. They ask really okay. harsh questions to them. Yeah, so. I better be able to do this. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I think I, I just, you have so many accomplishments that I just was like, I have so many things I want to learn. Um, so, you know, Brief bio, you know, at just 35, like I mentioned, you've already been Miss USA. You've mm -hmm. competed in professional volleyball tournaments, even training for the Olympics. You worked at a renowned media company. You did postgraduate work in pre-medical sciences. I'm curious, like, what's on your desk? Like, because I look at it, I'm like, what's all this stuff? So what's on yours? Like, anything you can hold up and show us that might be interesting and tell us a little something about you? So that's a trick question because ever since I was a student I don't have like I obviously have like desks in my room but a I'm in a hotel room I, I'm I'm visiting New York City but in general I love working from different places like coffee shops or libraries um, even when I was studying at UCLA and even now um, working I like to change it up so trick question I don't really work at a desk <laughs> I like to move around <laughs> I love that that's such a great answer and how long are you going to be in New York because I get there on Saturday oh amazing um I am here through the weekend um I I used to live here I lived here for eight years um and then during COVID, I kind of moved back to DC where my parents are um, and then I dropped all my stuff off and I've been doing a lot of traveling. So I, I've entered into nomad life. <laughs> I feel it. I'm the same. I just did my first time traveling for Florida summer, mm. uh, which was the greatest thing. Highly recommend to anyone. Oh, because it's too hot? It's too hot. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and if you, I'm just going to quickly toss this up for people to see and obviously extend the invite. I'm celebrating women through uh, my Women Making History series, event series. So this is what I'm coming to New York to do. If you're in New York, would love for you would, to attend anyone and pop this into the room chat. We're just celebrating the women in our generation that are making history. And um, obviously, Nana, you're one of them. So if you could be really honored. Amazing. Um, yeah, thank you. So with such a wide range of accomplishments under your belt, I want to know, how do you identify? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you consider yourself an artist? Like people always want to, you know, put you in the box. Do you? Yeah. Have yeah. I, as you mentioned, thank you so much for the kind introduction. And again, for having me here today, but I've lived many lives. Um, I was a student athlete at UCLA became an all-american by the time i graduated and then was recruited to play professionally and trained for the olympics and then post-graduation i started competing in pageants and <laughs> long story short i became miss usa which is an amazing chapter in my life and then i stayed in new york city and started working at america's first fashion magazine which is harper's bazaar so my life was like the devil wears prada and then I went on to get a job in blockchain, and um, that's what I currently do, as well as I started my own business on the side, which I'm sure we'll get to, but I started a wine company. But the easiest way I find um, to live <laughs> multiple lives 
is to not put yourself in a box ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can easily um, label myself an athlete, but that would have been so much harder for me to redefine myself into pageant girl because they're so distinct and different. Um, I think my first pageant, I only wore mascara and like I sewed my dress together. So I was very much still like, what is, what is this? <laughs> um, so it's enabled me throughout my life to uh, follow many different paths is that I don't label myself and even still to this day um, I, I am human and <laughs> I'll, that's my that's my label <laughs> I love that human what what about your parents like growing up what three words do you think they would have used to describe you did you ever think you'd be doing what you're doing today like did you have already the vision from from that time um you know, I'm very much both of my parents, um, especially my father. Uh, he grew up in uh, the South during civil rights, so he had nothing growing up um, and worked hard and realized education was a way to better his life. And so he studied really hard and he was admitted to Duke University Medical School and he became the first African-American to go there. Um, and my, uh, well, there's more to him. <laughs> I'll tell one more story about him. But he was 28 and he was watching TV with his friend. And his friend was like, I bet you can't run as fast as those guys. And my dad was like, I think I could. <laughs> so he was a doctor at this point. And during his breaks, he would run around the hospital campus. Um, like he didn't know what he was doing really, but he started entering track meets and he kept winning. Um, he eventually uh, qualified, I believe, for the world championships. Um, he qualified for the Olympics of 1972. I may be wrong on the year but um, he tore his hamstring and was unable to go, but he made the cover of Sports Illustrated in 1971 because he broke the record for the 100 yards and he'll have it forever because the race is now the 100 meters. So that's where I get my whole like multifaceted, <laughs> like live many lives. Um, he's done more, we could, we could go on with more stories, but my mother, just like uh, my father, she is South African. She grew up just like him had no opportunity really um and used school as a way to better her life she became a cpa a lawyer and she's an mba so from her i get my persistence in that um you know when you strive for things bigger than yourself you get a lot of no's and so mm -hmm. from my mother i get this sense of courage to keep going on even when like doors closed so um i don't know what they would have named me or called me uh, when i was young um, I was certainly very social and more extroverted than my brother and sister, um, but um, those are the things I at least get from them. So wonderful. I love those stories. Thank you. And you can ask them and tell me the next time that we chat. What they oh, okay. that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> and I, of course, I had hoped to try the wines before our chat, but randomly these things happen where April 8th, I started my three year freedom from alcohol pledge and yeah. then was looking at my calendar. And as I was cleaning out my, the alcohol from my home, I was like, oh my, my Navina is I didn't get to try it. I'm still going to meet with her. That's so, okay. But then I was doing research about mm -hmm. the background and how you came up with this and like mm -hmm. your whole little wanting to get away from drinking so much, which I thought was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So like, what is an alcohol alternative? I'm on a freedom from alcohol. Mm -hmm. Can I drink this? Yep. Yes. Really? No, no, I'm sorry. I got, I was agreeing to your whole okay. uh, opening statement. So okay. no, you cannot drink this. Although I will tell you the background of this and why um, it's, it's similar in uh, it, it, within this movement to, uh, towards people drinking less alcohol. Um, and I commend you and I think it's so amazing. And so many people now are beginning to abstain from alcohol, whether you hear like, dry January or sober October, there is beginning to be a mindfulness about alcohol, which I think is super important because um, there has been, you know, a certain overindulgence and escapism um, with using substances that, you know, people have problems and they, you know, can drown themselves in a bottle instead of facing them, right? So um, with that said, I do personally think there is a middle ground and that um you know you just have to find that moderation that is good for you personally um if, if if alcohol is not a really big issue for you um that there are um 
options. Um, you don't have to drink like saturated cocktails that give you headaches and wine that's laden with chemicals and additives. Um, so I'm along this um, movement towards wellness around drinking. Um, I am founder of Navina. We make wine out of flowers in Napa, which is an ancient tradition. Uh, it is a cousin to kombucha that in ancient times, as far back as Egypt and Greece and Rome, ancient China, we used to brew botanicals and herbs, especially because when you ferment, the fermentation process is seen through every single culture on earth that, um, you know, we ferment cheese, right? Um, it is a process that has helped humans um, since humans began. So there are, um, there are positive aspects to, um, alcohol that it especially when paired with plants and herbs and botanicals it pulls out minerals and vitamins and um nutritive things that you know a juice wouldn't have right so i'm bringing this tradition back <laughs> um, of drinking wine of flowers and in our product development we were very mindful about how we were going to create this that especially modern wine companies, commercial industrial wines, you just walk into like a Walmart and get a wine. Mm -hmm. They put so many additives into wine. It is just, I would stay far away <laughs> with a 10 foot, foot pole. So there has been this movement towards being more mindful and aware of what goes into the winemaking process because it is not um, just grapes in a pot anymore. Um, winemakers are playing with many different um, additives. I think there's something like 70 or 80 FDA approved additives that you would really like side eye. Um, but we're returning to this very clean way of making wine. Um, we've also lowered the alcohol. Um, we've lowered the sugar, the calories and the sulfites. And it's really just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you that, um, I, I myself entered into a wellness journey and began to drink less. Um, mm. I have abstained from, you know, from alcohol for months, um, weeks, um, sometimes even like from Monday to Thursday, I make myself a promise that I won't drink. But now I've created this product where I personally like to call these my weekday wine, that if it's like a Tuesday and I've had a really long day, um, I'll first like meditate and make sure like my mind is right. And then like, I'll pour myself a glass and it's so low in all the things I'm able to be personally, I can wake up and be productive. And I feel like it aligns with my health goals as well. So that's a bit of a spiel of my brand and um, yeah. <laughs> it's like chef's kiss like i can't wait to try this um it, the intention that you have around it is so it's i think it's a testament to our our generation and how we think about how we build our businesses it's mm -hmm. not about like let's make some a wine you know it's everything the thoughtful design of the bottle how it looks like an alternative medicine you know <clears throat> you've been featured in forbes essence Ebony, Wine Mag, people can go out there um, and read about you. I'll drop all the links into the chat. I, what made you say yes to me when I reached out to speak to you? <laughs> well, just so much that you've um, already spoken of. Your interest in empowering women. Um, for example, being a woman in the winemaking industry, there's not many of us um, and just having the opportunity and platform to speak my story. Um, just, you know, I, I was very grateful. So thank you for this opportunity um, to speak to your audience, especially aligned with empowering women. Absolutely. It is really my honor to have this opportunity and chat with you mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So for those of you guys that are just joining us, we are chatting with Nana Merriweather. She's the founder of Navina Wines. She's also with Consensus, so working full-time job like many of us and has her side hustle or side business. I mean, I don't know what you call it, but I, yeah. the, you know, Consensus, it's a software and blockchain accelerator created by the co-founder of Ethereum is the second biggest digital currency behind Bitcoin. So I'd love to get your perspective on Web3. Like, what coins are you holding? Do you do like, the NFT projects or anything like that? So, yeah, I 
so I, I spoke that I worked in fashion before this. I worked in fashion for three years and then I kind of hit a ceiling. I went into my boss's office and for three years I'd never gotten a promotion. And she said, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to go out of fashion. There's something going on here that's like not right. And so I looked around the world and I was like, what are the most innovative um, communities or industries at the moment and in 2018 everyone was talking about this thing called bitcoin and so i started reading about it and it was super fascinating and i don't know how much time we have but like the context of um this technology be beyond currency and how it has the potential to change the world was just so intriguing to me um and so i was you know googling around reading articles and i came across this company called consensus and at the time it was an accelerator in mm -hmm. that um we would give funding to founders with ideas in blockchain and we had an office in brooklyn and the outside was totally graffitied it was like the floors were slanted i think we still have offices there but we were <laughs> remote because of covid but um it was very much like a Steve Jobs garage. Like it was very early on and people with ideas. And, you know, for example, there's people working on this thing called MetaMask, <laughs> which is now like a huge, <laughs> of course. So um, I was just so inspired being around founders like that. I never know knew how to build business or even had an inkling that I, I could build a business, but it was a very, um, it was a wellspring. It was like a, it was like a, I needed to experience that to see the day to days of what it is to be an entrepreneur. And so my entering into the field wasn't um, like, what coin can I have? And like, when will I get rich quick? I was just very much intrigued with business building. And um, so, I mean, I, I hold all the, the traditional like <laughs> pillar ones. Um, my role is pretty internal facing. And um, my, my, yeah, I, I, I'm just so fascinated by, yes, NFTs. And that, for example, um, the word or like the NFT has been Googled more times this year or I mean, it was last year uh, than the word Bitcoin or um, cryptocurrency. That NFTs and this form of art or digital expression um, is what is appealing to masses. Uh, and so for me, again, just blockchain in general, I, I'm not so much fascinated on like getting rich quick. It's just like what this technology is doing for humanity. And um, what's intriguing for me is like watching human behavior and what's taking and what's not um, straight from like a, a, a place that was um, building these companies. We've now more... Uh, we've evolved into more of a, a software company. So we're less like a Y Combinator and we're more like gonna be like a, a Microsoft or like a like a, a Google or something. Um, but it's it's been a, a wild ride. <laughs> That's so exciting. And I, I mean, that could be a whole chat we could have on that topic alone. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I see Michael Mara, the founder here of Entra has popped in. Maybe I can connect you guys and, and you guys can jam about, about Web3 stuff sometime. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So those I see more people are still joining us. It's it's great. Your would you say your main focus is is Navina or we don't even have to put it, it whether you have another focus, Navina. That's what we're talking about today. The brand, you know, these wine out of herbs, this wine that you're making and making cocktails like artists and stuff. Botanicals, it, it's actually for those that don't know, an age old tradition. I had no idea. This dates as far back to ancient Rome, Greece, China, Egypt. So these these delicious wines, when you pop them, they what I from what I've read online, I haven't opened mine yet. But they just kind of like infuse your entire situation. Like you can smell it, and it because it smells like herbs. Yeah, I can describe them a little bit. So yeah, my first two releases are hibiscus wine and marigold flower wine. And this whole tradition of making wine out of flowers comes from a field called herbalism, which was our first medicine that, you know, when our great grand, or maybe even further, our great great grandmother had to cure you, she wouldn't go to the corner store and get aspirin because there was no corner store. <laughs> She's like, go to the forest 
and know what bark to peel and how to brew it and what botanical to put in and it's all to heal you. So within this tradition, um, I've mentioned there, there was kombucha, there's mead, and there's this thing called herbal wine. And so, yeah, our first release, um, we launched the company last year in February is hibiscus wine. And um, but I, I just think these are so, uh, they're so fascinating because each different flower ferments in a different way. And there are notes that you're going to be familiar with. You're going to be like, oh, okay, this tastes a little bit like wine. There's something reminiscent about it because it's, we still use a fermentation process, mm -hmm. but there's also such things as like the hibiscus is super floral. So you'll get this thing that's like, oh, this reminds me maybe of a Pinot Noir because it's a really light red wine, but then mm. you'll be hit with like florals, but not intense, but in a way that's like delightful. And then um, our second release was Marigold Flower Wine, came out with that winter uh, last year. And that's our first white herbal wine. Um, I love sipping this uh, chilled. It has notes of pear and apple and marigolds to herbalists are known to be anti-inflammatory. Hibiscus is known to be super full of antioxidants. So within the tradition of herbalism, you get to also know the functional benefits and what's known about these flowers as well. But um, they're really, really light, delicious uh, wines, especially as I mentioned, to drink during the week because um, they're so low in all the things that, you know, I personally like to relax and wake up in the morning and- Totally. <laughs> Totally. I get that. I love it. I mean, I'm still, I'm counting down the days till I can pop it. I, I don't really struggle. I never had an alcohol problem. My freedom from alcohol was a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage everyone to share the room because we're going to start talking about, you know, how to build your business and launch on social media and all these best practices. So encourage you put, tweet it out, click the plus sign in the bottom window there, invite people that need to be in the room to hear what we're learning together today from Nana. She's an amazing founder. Um, I found her on Instagram. We connected. Um, actually, I found you on TikTok. That's actually how I found you. And then we reached out and connected on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So you've activated multiple channels. You're building your brand in public. It's the hot thing to do. Thinking mm -hmm. about your journey with kind of launching the brand, what have been some of your challenges, successes, you know, highlights, learnings, tips and tricks, best practices? That you All the things. <laughs> um, okay, wow. Okay, where do we start? <laughs> um, we, have, we have 10 more minutes. Okay, we have 10 minutes. I'll, minutes. Give you wanna... I'll, I'll give you all the secrets. So, first of all, if you're thinking of launching a business, um, usually the first thing people think about is the product. Like, what am I launching? And, and they focus on that. They like, just like focus on that only. And they're like, I have the greatest idea. Mm -hmm. Now, if I am to start another company in my lifetime, yes, of course, the product is super important, but literally you can smell, I mean, you can sell smelly socks. You can sell anything on this planet, right? What? What I implore any young uh, or starting out entrepreneurs to think about is your distribution. <laughs> how are you going to get your product out to people? And how are you going to have them hear about you? <laughs> because you can have your smelly socks, but you have to, are they gonna be in, in stores? Are you gonna be selling online? Are you going to have a subscription? Um, are you going to have in-person experiences and only sell at farmer's market? Um, what is your distribution? Um, and then next is, okay, great, you're gonna distribute this, but even if you go up to a retailer and you're like, I have some smelly socks, um, they're gonna wanna know like, why should we take this on? You have to build, um kind of energy within <laughs> the marketplace for people to want your product and there has been no time in human history where as a business builder we've had access directly to the consumer like if you're not thinking of starting a business or like something on the side it's kind of like we, we have so much opportunity these days to literally build a business and and have everyone hear about it. Previous, there have been so many obstacles. And so it was a very small group of people who would be able to start a business and reach the masses. But now we have things like social media. And yes, so I think I launched my company 
on on Instagram. Um, and probably I thought I think back then I thought like Facebook was gonna be like my saving grace, and then I was like, oh, okay, maybe Instagram some will help me. And then I just discovered things like TikTok, which we can get into. But now there's also things like this platform where what an opportunity here um, to build a community, um, which is so important for brands these days. So finding platforms like Entre, like it's like such a resource and such a tool um, to build community and energy around your brand. But I'm finding the greatest tool for me currently is TikTok and a lot of people when so like I'm in my mid thirties and I'm telling all my friends, you got to get on TikTok. And they're like, I'm too old for that. Or like, <laughs> isn't that a dancing app? And people don't realize that TikTok had more visits than Google last year. It had more views than YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it is the centerpiece of online <laughs> like congregation at the moment. And that's because it is, it's a, it's a gift that um, I find it a discovery platform that um, where on Instagram, in order to reach the people that I'm reaching, I'd have to pay for it. Uh, TikTok, I can tell my story and people discover me. It's not just my friends, like on Facebook, it was just my friends, Instagram, uh, it's just your, the people following you and in order for them to follow you, they kind of have to like know you. Um, right, and right. so uh, I'm finding TikTok and also uh, channels like this one uh, are really, really fruitful for me in business building. Um, there's also traditional ways of like PR and press about like getting your name out there. But then again, that's overhead. Um, you're probably gonna have to hire someone. Um, and there's, as I spoke, there's also social media ads. Um, but then again, that's so much competition in order to enter the race of social media ads. You have to have a really, really big budget to like make a dent. Mm -hmm. And so, um, at the start, it was really, really hard for me. I'd like focus so much on the product that, you know, I, I was ready to launch and I was like, oh wait, who am I speaking to? <laughs> how, how are people going to know about this? <laughs> you, can't, you kind of have this freak out moment and then you realize the power of, oh, I need to be really mindful about distribution and communication. So that's my long winded story about how to build business. <laughs> Oh, good. Yes. I mean, there's so much to think about with cancel culture. I think people get a mm -hmm. lot of um, anxiety around building in public and, and even yeah. myself, I, I definitely am like on every channel, like a little too much, but oh I God. still think that it's really important uh, to share the story. Yeah. I mean, that's how I found you. Yeah. Uh, we have just a few more minutes guys. So make sure you put in any questions you want me to ask into the chat. Um, I do want to ask you before, I have a few more questions, but we'll be respectful of your time commitments. Mm -hmm. And so can you see this picture okay? I, I think yes. Okay, so this is a friend of mine and uh, Sean's uh, girlfriend and amazing partner, Aww. Sarah Zhang, and she just announced recently on her Instagram like a couple days ago and I saw this and I was like I have to ask Mama. Oh. So she's running for um Miss Florida Music A. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and um yeah just amazing. She's a full time music educator, masters student, and she's also Miss Palm Coast USA twenty two. So is that the same is she like on the same track as you to get to Miss USA? Oh yes. Let me speak about pageants for a little bit. So yeah, there's a lot of people don't know this, but there's Miss America and there's Miss USA. And those are two different distinct um institutions. Uh Miss America came first. The, the, the competition and then uh, Miss USA spun out to be on its own. And uh, Miss America is the girls who play piano and they're scientists and they juggle. And Miss USA, we don't have any talent. We just like walk on stage. I'm just kidding. But we don't have a talent portion. <laughs> right. Um, uh, obviously, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are talented. But there's a saying that. Um, Miss America is the girl who lives next door and Miss USA is the girl you wish lived next door. So like, we're a little bit more controversial. Like Donald Trump used to own the pageant. So like we'd be in the Got news it. and, and it's been, it's been, 
it's been a great, you know, institution in America for so long now. I think I was like something like the 63rd Miss USA. Um, so yes, she's on the track to become Miss USA. And it's such an amazing opportunity. Um, pageants really, you know, people really think superficially of them that, you know, it's, it's as if um, people downplay them sometimes, but I've never, well, from each part of my life, I pulled out a lot, but pageants have really prepared me for life um, in that you really, really, really get to know yourself and what you stand for. And it's these skills of preparing yourself for something way bigger than yourself, because this is usually on live TV. You really have to have a platform and understand yourself and what you stand for. So it's, it's really a preparation where, you know, any job interview now, I'm like, I, I got this. I can like speak in front of millions of people. I can speak in front of this, you know, interviewer. So I mean, I I would, it's 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 a path I'm so glad I took, and I I couldn't thank the Miss Universe organization and my role as Miss Universe is such a gift. So I highly recommend them if you've ever thought about doing it. It's a great way to learn about yourself. Dope, dope. Yeah, I'm. I definitely anything that I can pass along to Sarah. Um, just any tips for her as she goes into this next chapter of her life? Yeah, the biggest tip is I usually, I prepared three things, like three things I, about myself. For example, I was an athlete at the time. I was studying to become um, a doctor and I had a nonprofit. So any question uh, you're asked kind of like, you know, peg it to one of those three things. And it's a way for people to like, to get to know you. Like if they're, if they ask like, what are your biggest fears? You'd be like, you know, I'm studying really hard to get into medical school and I'm really fearful. Like, but you're, you're, you're silently telling them more about yourself, mm -hmm. but if you have you memorize and like get to know like these three revolving things about yourself, you can answer any question. Mm -hmm. um, so my advice to her is think of three things that are, uh, you know the pillars of what make up who she is that's great advice for anyone thank you for that yeah okay anyone ha have questions this is your chance to make sure that you answer you get them asked um you're gonna have to pop them in okay so caleb from virtual founder of virtual insanity web3 enthusiast on TikTok, has asked what's the most valuable skill you experienced that was important in the development of your business? So I don't know if it's a skill, but um, I've gotten so many no's. Um, for example, early on, I was looking for a production partner, a winemaker to scale my business. Who knows? Because I'm making wine differently. It's, it's a legacy institution with old families. Um, they don't deter from how they make the wine for thousands of years. So like I come knocking on the door, I'm like, I want to make it out of flowers. They're like, no. <laughs> um, but each no led me to, you know, think about like a new feature about my brand. Um, like, for example, I started this as a non-alcoholic wine company and um, we couldn't find a way to take out the alcohol that wasn't adding additives back or that wasn't uh, it didn't taste good um so we settled on low alcohol um but that it that whole process of product developing was like a big no but again it allowed me to figure out a new feature to my wine and that was keeping the alcohol low instead of no um so you really just have to have thick skin and realize um like, for example, now I'm raising money um, and there's a lot of no's because I'm still like a smaller brand, but there's also a lot of yeses. And I'm, I'm like, I'm continuing conversations, but each no I get, I get some sort of feedback that I'm like, oh, actually, yeah, maybe I should do that. Like I've, I can, I can think of so many examples of, you know, conversations have ended with potential partners, but they've opened up new opportunities in my brand. So, um, kind of like take no's as a door. And if the no hurts, take a day off and start the next day um, because there's usually a gift hidden within that no. Mm, what a beautiful note to end on. Thank you so much again. Everybody make sure that you guys check out uh, drinknavina.com. I just popped that link into 
the room chat, pick up a couple bottles or get a subscription yeah. if you, you know, need a weekday wine and there's nothing wrong with that. And this is low alcohol, so it's even better. Any last parting words, Nana, before we go or how can people reach out to you if they have more questions? Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Um, such great questions. Um, just uh, everyone go to your, your go to Rium's event uh, on Saturday. If you're in New York, it's yeah. my announcement. Um, and also you can find thank me you. on uh, Instagram, TikTok. And I'm really, really usually, I'm usually open. Uh, I love speaking with people and like, I, I'm really engaged on social media. So DM me any questions and we'll be friends. <laughs> Yay! Thanks for giving me the opportunity to shout it out. And thanks for everyone for joining us today. We've really enjoyed having you guys in the chat conversation today. It means so much to have you tune in. We appreciate you. And like Michael says, let's go out have a great rest of your week and make some money. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Miriam. Uh -huh.